Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today as we learn more about BigFix, the best endpoint management system in the world. Coming from HCL's BigFix AVP consulting team, my name is Jeff Schaefer and I'm going to be going over an intro to the BigFix Relay, which is the key to near real-time information and continuous monitoring. So let's get started. So what is the BigFix Relay? The Relay is an agent that you install on an existing system that already has the standard BigFix client agent. Once configured, it works in a distributed and hierarchical manner to allow near real-time management of endpoints across diverse networks. A Relay's sole job is to proxy all communication between the single BigFix core server and managed endpoints. This allows customers to easily scale up to 250,000 endpoints using a single core server. Relays save bandwidth because endpoints initiate communication with the Relay over a single TCP port after receiving a UDP notification from their Relay about a new piece of content. This eliminates unnecessary agent communication across the network, yet still provides the ability for near real-time info and patching of your endpoints. The Relay agent can be installed on a variety of operating systems, giving you more flexibility to integrate the Relay on an operating system of your choice. You can install the Relay agent on all recent flavors of Windows operating systems, both desktop and server flavors. There is also Relay agents available for Solaris, Red Hat Enterprise Linux, Suzy, Ubuntu, CentOS, AIX, and even TinyCore Linux for those that really desire a tiny footprint. You can deploy the Relay agent easily via a fixlet in your console or by downloading and running the Relay agent manually from the following URL support.bigfix.com forward slash bez forward slash release. Depending on the size of your organization, relays can serve in different roles. The number one rule in running BigFix is never point your clients to the core server. This gives extra work to the core server that it could be better spent on processing data about your environment. Think of it this way. The core server loves to delegate the busy work to relays and only deal with consolidated client reports that relays package up and send to it. If you had all your clients talking to your core server, not only would it be busier and slower, but it may even run out of TCP sockets and stop working altogether. You definitely don't want that. So that's why we have relays. There's quite a few roles a relay can fulfill, but there are two major types of roles that I'll talk to you about today. The rest you'll learn in a more advanced class later on in this training series. The two roles are site relays and top end relays. I wanna point out up front though, that regardless of the role that the Relay agent is performing, the software you install is the exact same. It's more of a configuration and network location of the Relay deployment that determines what role a Relay is performing. Site Relays are what you will have the most of, so let's talk about them first. Site Relays are the frontline relays to your endpoints. They get all the client deltas that are coming all the time based on your set reporting interval, of course. They package and compress all those deltas up and send it up the chain. You want to have relays everywhere because they distribute the load and save tons of bandwidth. In fact, I love to see customers designating site relays and backup relays on every single network in their environment. This is especially important for networks separated by slow WAN links. A single site relay is sized properly can handle up to 5,000 endpoints. However, I don't like doing that. It works, but if you really want fast and rapid communications and real-time monitoring, try to shoot for no more than one to 2,000 endpoints per relay. This keeps things distributed and doesn't put too much effort on one area of your deployment. Also, factor in relays acting as a backup for a relay that may have gone down. Clients can be assigned primary and secondary and even tertiary and even fourth and fifth relays. If a relay handling 5,000 endpoints goes down, do you really want 5,000 endpoints failing over to another relay that is already handling 5,000 endpoints? First of all, that relay will run out of TCP sockets pretty quick, and now you're in a pickle. So just keep that in mind when deciding when and how many relays to deploy. So once you designate a system or systems on a network as a relay, Endpoints are configured to use those relays for communication instead of reaching all the way back to the core server. This communication occurs on TCP 52311, which the endpoint initiates when they need to send a new client delta or maybe an action status or even a simple heartbeat. Relays, on the other hand, notify endpoints via UDP 52311 when new content is available. This could be a new patch, a new action you deployed, or maybe a new content like an automatic group or a fixlet that is available. 
Once relays notify endpoints on UDP 52311, clients immediately check in to see what's waiting for them and they process that content. I do wanna mention that if a customer is unable to have UDP reach endpoints for whatever reason, we do have a feature called command polling that forces a client to check in on set schedules, which you kind of want to avoid if possible as it equates to more network traffic. We like to be efficient. Also in our recent versions, we have a peer nest capability as well as a persistent connection capability that eliminates UDP altogether and does just what it sounds like. And that creates a persistent TCP 52311 connection between an endpoint and a relay. So how does a site relay get its information and relay client information back up to the core. For small organizations don't, that don't need top-end relays, they simply package and compress all that info about the client endpoints and send it to the core server for processing. And they do this over TCP 52311 as well. For larger organizations, however, if you have a, a large number of site relays, like 100 or more, you could be hammering that core server with a lot of site relay communication. So for larger organizations, usually those that have around 40,000 endpoints or more, or 100 site relays, whatever comes first, we have another role a relay can fill, and that's called a top-end relay. A top-end relay sole role is to take all the communications from the site relays in your environment and pass it up to the core. Top-end relays should never talk to endpoints directly. That's a big no-no. That's not their role, and you don't want them to deal with endpoints. Let the site relays deal with that. This accomplishes a few things. First and most importantly, it keeps that core server from dealing with all the traffic from the site relays. Your core server will be thankful, trust me. Secondly, it packages up all the client reports, all those packages that are received from the site relays and sends a single compressed efficient package up to the core server containing everything. It's super efficient. If you have BigFix deployed today and it seems you aren't seeing the core server running in real time as you prefer, your reporting is kind of off, nine times out of 10 is because you don't have enough site relays out there as close to your endpoints as possible. Or if you're a large customer, maybe you haven't deployed top end relays to the right locations or deployed them at all. Remember, the core server likes to process data about the tens and thousands of your endpoints. It doesn't like to talk to them directly. Let it do its job. Utilize site relays and top end relays appropriately to make that possible. Also, in case you were wondering, endpoints and relays support encryption up to FIPS 256 bit to ensure all client data is protected when traversing from the client to the relay infrastructure all the way up to the core. That's a little advanced for now, but so we'll talk about configuring encryption in another video. Let's talk about relay specs next. So another nice thing about relays is they don't require expensive hardware to run. They have a pretty small footprint. They don't use a lot of CPU or memory. So you can put them on existing servers, like maybe your underutilized file servers or print servers that have plenty of resources. You can put it on a virtual machine or maybe even a repurposed workstation that you could use uh, as a relay or even a repurposed laptop for areas that you don't have either. One thing you wanna make sure of though is you choose any reliable system that's powered on 24 seven. So let's talk about the relay CPU and memory requirements. As you can see on my slide, I have two different charts, one for top end relays and one for site relays. Remember the top level relays, they handle all the site relays. So count up all the clients that are managed by all the site relays, and that's where you get that client count. So using this chart, if you're at the lower end, you'll use the left number in the CPU. If you're at the higher end of that field, use the, the higher number, right? The same goes for memory. Site relays are the same. So if you want, you can pause this video and review this chart. So let's talk about the relay storage requirements. So you want to plan for the OS, of course, plus about three gigs for the big fix relay agent binaries and logs and all the things that come with the relay agent, plus about 300 megabytes per patch site subscribed. So if you have Windows patching going on and, and Linux patching and Mac patching, give it 300 megabytes per patch site. The cache is the most important though. Relays default to a really low value, like one gig. You'll want to raise that right away. So minimum five gigs, I would recommend for a patch cache, but I like to see at least 10 on a site relay and double that on top end relays. You can also put the cache on another drive or partition if you want. So moving on to network requirements, it's pretty much dependent on your organization's network topology, which could be different at every organization. But the best practice is to designate a relay on every remote network that has you know, 10 machines or more if BigFix patch deployment is used. 
You can put relays in the single points of communication for DMZs and secure network segments. Just remember that you got to make sure that TCP 52.3.11 is bidirectional between relays and the relay above it or from your client to your relays. Remember, endpoints initiate connections to your relays over 52.3.11. Also, we'll talk about this in another class, but if you get to automatic relay selection, ICMP is also required incoming from endpoints to your relays. And don't forget the UDP 52.3.11 from your relay to your endpoints. That's the notification port. That's how your clients find out about new content. Well, that wraps up our intro to relay training. So what did we learn today? Well, we learned that relays allow customers to scale up to 250,000 endpoints using a single big fix core server. If you deployed your relays in the proper locations, as many places as you can, you can do rapid threat response. You can deploy patches literally in minutes to thousands of computers. If you have your relays close to your endpoints, you're going to greatly reduce your LAN and WAN bandwidth compared to competing solutions. Relays require minimal hardware with a wide variety of low-cost platform choices. Thank you for joining me today in my intro to Big Fix Relays video. Feel free to browse the various web URLs on this slide that take you to our other Big Fix online resources. Subscribe to our channel and keep an eye out for more detailed relay videos in the near future. My name is Jeff Schaefer and I'll see you soon.